And what is going on, hockey fans? It is, as always, your host of NHL Weekly, Neil Villapiano, and welcome to another edition of NHL Weekly, right here exclusively on the Hockey Podcast Network. And it is your number one place to get everything you need to know about what's going around the NHL and hockey world. And as always, shout out to our sponsors over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Use promo code THPN, when you sign up to get $200 in risk-free bets after you make a $5 purchase. And with so many different sports going on, you obviously got the NFL playoffs going now into the conference championship week. You obviously got NHL hockey all the time, NBA as well. Major League Baseball is getting closer and closer to getting underway and so much more as well. And with all that going on, you already know that DraftKings Sportsbook is your number one destination to get in on all the huge money prizes. So sign up with DraftKings Sportsbook and use our promo code THPN when you make a $5 bet. You get $200 instantly in free bets. That's an offer I don't think you can refuse. So as always, shout out to DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the Hockey Podcast Network. And remember, hockey fans, make sure to bet responsibly. So, as you can see from the title of this episode, we had a pretty bombshell uh, announcement that was made over the weekend by the New York Islanders, as on Saturday afternoon, the New York Islanders announced they had fired Lane Lambert and hired Hall of Fame goaltender and former head coach of the Colorado Avalanche, Patrick Waugh, as his replacement. Lambert was in his second season as the Islanders' head coach and compiled an overall record of 61, 46, and 20. He did take the Islanders to the postseason last year, in his first year as the head coach of the Islanders, before losing to the Carolina Hurricanes in the first round. And so for Patrick Waugh, he will begin his second stint as head coach. He was last behind the bench, as mentioned before, with the Colorado Avalanche. He coached the Avalanche from 2013 to 2016. And the 2013-14 season was particularly uh, interesting because he coached the Avalanche to an impressive 52-22-8 record and a first-place finish in the Central Division. However... The Avalanche were upset in the first round of those playoffs by the Minnesota Wild. And it was two seasons after that, the Avalanche certainly went backwards and he was later fired after a 39-39-4 and season back in 2015-2016. So it has been pretty much almost a full decade since the last time we saw Patrick Waugh behind the bench of any team in the National Hockey League. And I think some people are wondering, where has he been? What has he been up to? And what got him to the point where he's at now, now that the new head coach of the New York Islanders? Well, he's coming off a very, very impressive coaching career in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, where he was the head coach of the Quebec Remparts, and he won two Memorial Cups in 2006 and also this past year in 2023. And he also won one QMJHL championship, which was also last year, 2023. And in 13 years with Quebec, Wall has an overall record of 524, 255, and 66. As the head coach and his 524 wins are the sixth most all time in QMJHL history. And they also, the rent parts, made the playoffs in 12 of the 13 years that Patrick Wall was the head coach. And in addition, to coaching the Remparts, Wall was also the team owner and served as a G as general manager, winning the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League's Gym of the Year in 2022. And so clearly Patrick Waugh has paid his dues. He does have some some experience, some success coaching in the NHL. And a lot of questions going into this are going to be: can Patrick Waugh uh coach and have success in this new age uh NHL? Can he adapt? to the way the game is played. And it's really kind of a bombshell hire because Patrick Waugh's name has come up a lot in terms of, you know, when it comes to guys who may get fired, had coaching vacancies down the road as a guy that could get an opportunity. Well, he gets his opportunity here in late January, and he's going to see if he can get the Islanders going. And so far, he's off to a good start as the New York Islanders last night came back in the third period, down 2-1, to to win 3-2 to in overtime at home against the Dallas Stars. So a big win for the Islanders to move them uh, into fourth place where they are 
already there, but in fourth place in the Metropolitan Division. And right now, just a point or two behind in the standings in terms of making the playoffs. So, again, solid start for the New York Islanders and Patrick Waugh on his debut. You can already see by this picture, he's already back to his yelling ways. He's a very, very disciplined type of coach. And we'll see. We'll see. It's very early to tell, but a good start for the Islanders as now they begin this new era of Islander hockey with Patrick Waugh, now the new head coach of this New York Islanders team. So let me know what you guys think of this hire. Do you like it? Do you not like it? What are your thoughts overall about Patrick Waugh as uh, the new Islanders head coach? So now let's shift over to the Pacific Division, or really, you know, out west in, in Western Canada, as we got news over the weekend that Corey Perry, who has been out for an extended period of time due to, you know, some unforeseen misconduct um, with the Chicago Blackhawks, he has signed a one-year deal with the Edmonton Oilers. So he's agreed to a deal, and he will be an Oiler for the remainder of the season. Now, to give you some backstory in case you forgot, the Chicago Blackhawks terminated Perry's contract back in November after the team said it determined through an investigation that Perry engaged in, quote, unacceptable, end quote, conduct. In a news conference at the time, Blackhawks general manager Kyle Davidson was asked if there was any criminal aspect involved in Perry's dismissal, and Davidson would go to say, this was a workplace matter. The specific details of what caused Chicago to cut ties with Perry continue to remain unknown. And uh, I don't think we'll ever really get the full story as to why Corey Perry's uh, contract was terminated. But, you know, he's back now. And it also should be mentioned here that Corey Perry met with NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman earlier this month to discuss his recovery from struggles with alcohol and was eligible to return to the league, two sources briefed on the matter previously confirmed. Perry didn't have to get a formal clearance from Gary Bettman and initiate the meeting on his own. So I give, I'll give i give Corey Perry credit that he didn't have to do this, but he chose to do it himself. And I think he wanted to show Gary Bettman that he was truly a changed person and that he really wants to be given another opportunity. And the NHL believed him, and so he's been given this next opportunity, and he's joining the Edmonton Oilers, as uh, you know, they, they certainly would like his veteran presence. He's a really, really solid bottom six guy at this point in his career. And one thing that has been a criticism for the Oilers, other than goaltending, has been their lack of depth scoring. And Corey Perry, Perry can certainly bring some of that depth scoring to this Blackhawks team. So I'm really curious to see how he fits overall in not block system and the team overall. And uh, really, really going to be interesting. And I, and I wonder what type of reception he's going to get overall in the locker room and things like that. Maybe he'll have that heart to heart conversation with the Oilers, you know, brass in terms of everything. But considering that reports are coming out that he has, uh, he's going to definitely sign with them. It sounds like that the Oilers, um, certainly welcome him with open arms and welcoming him despite uh, everything that had gone on. So let me know in the comment section below, just like with everything else, what you guys think of the Corey Perry situation. Do you think that Perry deserves another opportunity? How do you think he'll fit with the Edmonton Oilers and all those things in between? Again, let me know in the comment section, your thoughts would love, love, love to interact with you guys. And speaking of the Edmonton Oilers, we have to talk about what is for sure the hottest team in the National Hockey League, as the Oilers are coming off a 3-1 to win over their Alberta rivals in the Calgary Flames in last night's game. They won 3-1 to in Calgary. But what was significant about that win is that Edmonton has now extended its winning streak to 13 games in a row. That's right. The Edmonton Oilers, who if you remember, we go back a couple months ago when we were first starting out NHL Weekly, one of the first things we talked about was the struggling Edmonton Oilers and that it looked like all hope was lost. They weren't going to make the playoffs, all of those stuff in between. But they, but fast forward now to late uh, January and they are rocking and rolling. And again, Chris Knobloch has done a fantastic job since taking over as the head coach of the Oilers. So, give you some more history that was made with this win. So, the Oilers' milestone of 13 games in a row win streak is the longest win streak by a Canadian team in NHL history, passing the 1967-68 Montreal Canadiens, who won 12 in a row. This winning streak is also tied for the 
fifth longest in NHL history, and it is now the second year in a row in which a team in the NHL has won 13 or more games in a row in a season. Last year was the New Jersey Devils. This year, it is the Edmonton Oilers. And just to give you some information, the longest winning streak in NHL history is 17 wins in a row by the eventual Stanley Cup champion, 1992-90, excuse me, the uh, two-time defending Stanley Cup champion, 1992-93 Pittsburgh Penguins, who would go on to lose in the second round of that year's playoffs in an upset to the Edmonton Oilers. It also should be noted that the Oilers' nine consecutive road wins shattered the old franchise record of eight, which was set back in 1986-87. So the Oilers have been red, red, smoking hot right now. And they are playing a tremendous brand of hockey. You look at Chris Knobloch, he is now 23-6-0 since taking over as the Oilers' head coach. For him to have won... You know, more than 75% of the games he's coached so far is just a tremendous job and really a guy that you could make a really good argument to maybe win coach of the year with the job that he has done. It also should um, be mentioned that Stuart Skinner, the starting netminder for the Oilers, and again, one of the major criticisms throughout the early goings of the year, he has now won 10 games in a row. He's 17-2-0 in his last 19 starts and 21-9-1 overall on the season. And so he has certainly gotten a lot better. The goaltending has been more stabilized, really kind of brings in uh, interesting questions as to what the Oilers are going to do once we get closer to the deadline. They may still go after a goaltender, but Overall, you got to be pretty pumped up if you're an Oilers fan and being really excited. You just hope from Edmonton's perspective that they're not peaking too soon. You look at how the New York Rangers started off the year tremendously, and now look at them. They're struggling and, you know, holding on for dear life and at the top of uh, the Metropolitan Division. But right now, the Oilers are flying. And they're going, and they look to continue this success moving forward. They'll go for their 14th win in a row tomorrow night at home when they take on the Columbus Blue Jackets. So it's really, really been impressive to see where the Oilers came from to start the year and where they are now. And what do you guys think? Do you guys think that this is uh, this winning streak is going to continue? Do you feel that the Oilers are peaking too soon? What do you think has led to their success other than the coaching change? Let me know your guys' thoughts on the Oilers' red-hot 13-game winning streak currently that they have going on. So now we'll shift over to, you know, a controversial hit that happened over the weekend, as uh, you could see, well, from this picture, uh, this is literally like a millisecond before the hit actually happened. As you see, Minnesota Wild goaltender Marc-Andre Fleury is trying to play the puck behind the net, while William Lockwood of the Florida Panthers is going in to try to steal it. And also, he ended up delivering a pretty big hit, as because of this, he was suspended three games by the NHL for what they deemed as goalie interference. Lockwood was punished by the league late Saturday night for hitting Marc-Andre Fleury after the Minnesota Wild goaltender, as you see uh, from this picture, um, went behind the net to play a puck early in the first period of the Panthers' 6-4 loss on Friday. The NHL said Lockwood made a, quote, high forceful contact with Fleury's head, end quote. Uh, Lockwood was assessed a minor penalty for goalie interference. He also received two minutes for roughing following his scrum with Minnesota defenseman Zach Bogosian, who you also see in this picture. And shortly after Lockwood returned to the ice following the penalty, he ended up getting injured in another fight, this time with wild forward Brandon Dume, and did not return to the game. And as for Marc-Andre Fleury, he exited the game midway into the second period with an upper body injury, which... I think a lot of us deem as more or less a concussion and uh, haven't gotten a lot of word as of right now. So we'll see uh, what the short end potentially long-term effects could be with Flurry being out. And Flurry is a guy that has been mentioned over the last couple of days of, of a potential guy that could be moved at the trade deadline, depending on where the wild are. Um, and so things are certainly not where they need to be. If you're the wild, they got the win, but it was almost like, but at what cost, right? So yeah, it was not, to me, I felt like it was an unnecessary hit. I think he wasn't looking to try to play the puck. I think he was squarely looking to hit Flurry and try to loose, you know, knock Flurry out of the way so that he could go and try to get an easy tap in goal. But the ref 
Right move by him, calling a penalty, give Zach Bogosian credit, went right after Lockwood. And uh, Dume also had some some choice words as well. Uh, and I think overall, just a good job by the Wild to stand up for, for Flower. And William Lockwood certainly paid the price both physically and also just in general being on the ice. So William Lockwood has been suspended for the next three games. We'll see what his injury status is going to be as well because maybe he misses more than three. And uh, he will be able to return at some point next week for the Florida Panthers. So, uh, you know, I think overall for me, I think the NHL handled this pretty well. I don't really disagree with anything that they did in terms of the aftermath and even on the ice at that time. But uh, let me know what you guys think. Do you agree with the calling? Do you think it was a clean hit? All the things in between about that situation. Again, William Lockwood suspended three games for his hits towards the head of Marc-Andre Fleury over the weekend. So we got some pretty interesting news out of the uh, out of Ottawa as the Ottawa Senators announced late last late this past week, basically uh, right before the weekend of last week, that uh, they had signed forward Shane Pinto, restricted free agent Shane Pinto, to a one year seven hundred seventy five thousand dollar contract. Now, what's interesting is that this came just two days before his forty one game suspension for gambling was up. The, the NHL never really said it was gambling, but they described it basically like it was gambling. And that, and that's based and that's pretty much what it was. So Shane Pinto missed the first half of this season. There had been contract talks and things were not going well with the restricted free agent, but he gets an opportunity to play the rest of the year with the Senators. Again, one year, $775,000 contract. He's 23 years of age, coming off career highs last season in goals with 20, assists with 15, and points overall with 35, as he played in all 82 games for the Ottawa Senators last year. Now, in his return to the lineup from his suspension, uh, Pinto actually ended up getting a point in Sunday's and yesterday's 5-3 win over the Philadelphia Flyers. Pinto got an assist on Tim Stutzler's second period tally. So, again, Pinto gets the opportunity now to be back in uh, back with the Ottawa Senators to kind of, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens once we get to the offseason. I think it all depends on how Pinto plays and everything like that. Um, I believe he will be a restricted free agent uh, again after this season. So it'll be really curious to see how the Senators go about that in a year where the Senators are towards the bottom of the NHL. They're not playing very well. Um, and it's kind of becoming a lost season for Ottawa. They fired their head coach and GM. They're kind of starting over again. So it'll be really interesting to see how they all go about that once everything gets settled. But um, again, guys, let me know what you think of the Shane Pinto situation. Do you feel that the Senators are justified in, in, in signing Shane Pinto? Do you, you know, how do you feel about, you know, the outlook for the rest of this season and also what you think might happen in the offseason between him and, in the Ottawa Senators, really going to be, uh, you know, one of the many interesting storylines coming out of Ottawa once we get uh, to the off season. Now, now, let's talk about the NHL All Star Game jerseys because holy smokes, was this a? Uh, let's call it a very interesting uh, year in terms of just deciding to uh, to go with this format because I have to be honest with you guys. We again, we talked. We've talked about this before about how the um, Adidas is going out, and this is their last year doing jerseys. And you really kind of wondered how they were going to go with it. This is weird. This is very, very weird. They were revealed this past week, and it's been um, it has been reacted with interesting. Interesting reactions to it all. This is a collaboration with uh, Canada-based Justin Bieber's Drew House brand. Uh, and this is kind of the result that we're going to get. And simply put, in my opinion, they don't look great. Uh, again, things could change once they're on the ice. But I think overall, from what we've seen, this is maybe like a 3 out of 10, if I'm being honest. Uh, the logo sees a cartoon-esque version of the NHL logo on a yellow star backdrop, as you can see. The same yellow prominently featured on the Drew House brand. So, yeah, they go with four different colors because, again, we're going to have captains this year and we're going to have, um, you know, any, the uh, fantasy draft, which is somewhere really cool, something really looking forward to. 
I think overall, this is kind of a strange, strange thing. Uh, on the back, the nameplate is actually on the bottom instead of above the numbers, which I am not a fan of. And quite frankly, they look like Kraft Macaroni and Cheese jerseys. Some people say they look like the Arby's logo as well. There's a lot of different uh, names that they've uh, used to describe this. So overall, not a fan of this, but I would love to know what you guys think overall. I know that there's a lot of Jersey people out there who love to discuss these things. And I would really love to know what you guys think overall of these, uh, not so great, um, not so great jerseys for sure. And sticking with the all-star game, we also got word uh, over the weekend that we had our uh, official captains and celebrity captains uh, for the NHL All-Star Weekend. So Saturday night's announcement unveiled members of all four teams, each with an NHL player captain, co-captain, celebrity captain, and designated jersey color that will draft in the pool of previously selected All-Stars on February 1st. Those groupings will then last throughout the skills competition on February 2nd and play together during the All-Star Game, which will be on February 13th. And here are your captains and co-captains for the NHL All-Star Game. So in Team Blue, you obviously have Austin Matthews and his best buddy, um, you have his best buddy, Justin Bieber. So the blue will be Team Matthews, captained by Toronto Maple Leaf Center, Austin Matthews, with co-captain and Leafs teammate, Morgan Riley. They'll be joined by celebrity captain, Justin Bieber, a longtime Leafs fan, and he's also a frequent face that you see at a lot of Leafs games. Uh, on the white team, you obviously have Connor McDavid, captain of the... Uh, captain of the Edmonton Oilers. His co-captain will be his teammate, Leon Dreisaitl. An actor and avid hockey lover, Will Arnett, will be their celebrity captain. He also is a big-time Leafs fan. In the yellow team will be Team McKinnon, captained by Colorado Avalanche center Nathan McKinnon, with co-captain and teammate Kale McCarr. And Canadian singer-songwriter, you know her, you love her, Tate McRae, uh, whose recent single Greedy was a top three hit on the Billboard music chart, is their celebrity captain. I'm sure her ex-boyfriend Cole Sillinger of the Columbus Blue Jackets is absolutely thrilled that her ex is getting so much attention from the NHL, uh, despite Sillinger, let's call it being unfaithful to uh, his now ex-girlfriend. And I'll just leave it at that. A lot of you already know the whole situation with Cole Sillinger and Tate McRae. But Tate McRae has been, you know, visible throughout the hockey world this year. She's been to a couple of different games, and uh, now she's going to be featured during the All-Star game as well. And then last but certainly not least, because we love having fun here in the NHL, uh, really wants to hype this brother, these brothers up. In the red team will be Team Hughes, with co-captains and brothers Quinn Hughes of the Vancouver Canucks and Jack Hughes from the New Jersey Devils. Canadian singer and Vancouver native Michael Buble will be um, will be the uh, celebrity captain. He's also a part owner of a junior team uh, in Vancouver as well, and will act as their celebrity captain. Now, should also be mentioned that each team will eventually be assigned a coach as well. Those roles will go to the bench boss atop each division standings. Currently, we have Winnipeg Jets' Rick Bonus, Vancouver's Rick Tockett, Boston's Jim Montgomery, and the New York Rangers' Peter Laviolette. So, again, NHL kind of going back to, uh, you know, a fantasy draft and things like that. Something that we all really enjoyed when they first started doing it years ago, and now they finally brought it back. Got some celebrity captains as well. I think it'll be a really interesting showcase. A lot of people are wondering, with Jack Hughes being one of the co-captains, does that mean he's going to participate in the All-Star game? Is he coming back? Because he's been out for the last couple of weeks with a middle body injury. The answer is is no. He is most likely going to be out through the All-Star weekend. So it looks like he's going to be out for at least a couple of uh, more weeks, but he will be in attendance and be a part of the draft and things like that. He will be part of All-Star game uh, festivities for sure. So Overall, guys, what do you think of this whole format, the jerseys, like I mentioned before, the celebrity captains and everything in between as uh, we are approaching very closely to the NHL All-Star Weekend. And so on that note, guys, that's going to do it for us here on this edition of NHL Weekly. Thank you all so much, as always, for checking out these episodes. New episodes come out every Monday here exclusively on THPN. If you like what you see, make sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time 
we post a new video of NHL Weekly. And also, when we go live for live watch longs covering every team in the NHL, giving you live play-by-play -play action of specific NHL games. So make sure you go check it out as well. And follow us on social media at HockeyPodNet, both on Instagram and on Twitter. And you can also follow my personal Twitter at The NVP Show, which you can see at the top right of your screen. Go check out all the podcasts on the Hockey Podcast Network covering every team in the NHL and so much more. And you can also check out my personal podcast, The Devil's State of My Podcast here on THPN, which covers the New Jersey Devils. New episodes weekly on wherever you listen to podcasts. We're also on YouTube at Devil's State of Mind, close to 50 subscribers. So if you guys can go over and give me a sub, that would really be appreciative. And make sure you go check out all the episodes over there as well. But again, thank you so much for checking out this edition of NHL Weekly, and we will see you next week. Everyone continue to be the awesome people that you are. Have a great week, hockey fans. And always remember, make sure to rock on.